Hello, everyone. Welcome to this final community conversation of the 2020-21 academic year. It is a special pleasure to be able to talk to you about something that is incredibly dear to the hearts of everyone at CIS, and I'm talking about environmental protection and sustainable development. Let's get started. I'd like to begin by asking each of you, what was your very first memory of feeling that you personally needed to do something to protect the environment? And what was your very first action that you took to be able to fulfill that goal? When we were kids, um, we have this utopian view of what beaches should look like. And then you get there and you're like, wow, you see that it's full of plastic bags and see that it's full of water bottles. And um, the first step I did was like, we um, gathered a bunch of friends to clean up the beach together. And after we cleaned it up, we would, um, we would hang out on the beach. So I think that's pretty nice. Like the very first step I took to fulfill, like to try and help fix this problem was that I stopped eating beef. And I also took small, smaller portions of food and made sure I always finished what I took. For a long period of time, I'd stopped using all this plastic waste and I'd told my parents, told other families. And it was really just, for me, it was just a big moment of like making other people aware. That was my main relation to sustainability. And it was 1989 and this paper was talking about some scientific research that had been done on the Amazon rainforest and how the rainforest had greater value if you left it standing than if you cut it down for timber. And uh, my response to that was to apply for a research grant to go to Borneo and to do a, a market study of the, the value of the market potential of these non-timber forest products. I moved from uh, Canada to Russia and then from Russia to Borneo. Around me um, in Indonesian villages, uh, I saw just a shocking lack of waste management. My brother and I were looking across the, the hills and the valley, seeing much of it getting developed. And it, I think I made some kind of tactless remark. And um, the, our host said, well, that's what progress is. And it was my first moment in realizing that progress to some could be degradation to others. It was just looking at the amount of rubbish that we put out of my household every day. Um, it was incredible. I think all we started was with um, making better purchasing choices um, with where we bought our food and what kind of food we bought. Mostly food, actually. How important do you think schools are in ensuring that our planet continues to flourish? Do they have any kind of special role to play in this regard? I mean, schools need to be the most future-oriented institutions we have. They're all about providing for the future. And so if we haven't a vision for the future or a sense of how to equip our students, then we'll be preparing our students with the skills of the past to live in a future that, that very badly needs new skills. We must ensure that, that the younger generations are educated enough to understand how to fulfill this sustainable society and sustainable like dreams in the future. You know, what are we educating students for? And are we educating them unintentionally to perpetuate an unsustainable way of life? Or are we educating them to live, create a different way of living and the planet in the, in the uh, 50 years, late, the second half of the century, the planet that they will inherit? So the children, they come home every day and they tell us what they've been discussing at school. And they're the ones that make me and my friends, the other parents, um, change what we're doing today. Um, and the change has got to start now. Perhaps for the youngest members of our community, particularly those who are in primary school, could one of you please explain what exactly is renewable energy and why is it essential that our world and we too at CIS embrace it as much as possible? Energy we collect from renewable sources, for example, sunlight, wind, rain, tides, and these sources will never run out, at least in the human timescale, as opposed to sources like coal, oil and natural gas. So it is essential that the world and us in CIS embrace these new renewable sources because number one, we have infinite amount of these sources. So if we don't utilize them, they're just going to waste. Sustainability doesn't just mean to reduce what we're outputting. It means to make sure what we're outputting and what we're wasting is can be reused and can also is also renewable in the way that that resource is not lost. With remarkable support from the CIS Annual Fund, 
whose flagship initiative for the second year in a row has been to support and advance sustainable development in our school. We have launched this spring a project that will be completed this summer, which is to install solar panels on our rooftops. To help that objective, we organized during what's called HKEP, the Hong Kong Experience Program for year 10 and 11 students in early May, a special elective course that uh, up to 20 of our students could choose that would allow them to learn more about renewable energy. Can you tell us a little bit about the aims of that course, which you so brilliantly designed, and how exactly was it organized? So the aim was to make use of the school's current plans to install solar on the rooftop uh, as an educational opportunity for students to become actively involved in this redesign of some aspect of the school's uh, campus. And through that, to have for the students to have a real authentic project-based learning experience. Uh, it, was, it was a fairly advanced uh, course. Uh, it was a stretch designed to be a stretch for students in terms of the level. It was fast paced. We had four days to, uh, to teach it. Um, and it was a mix of theoretical and practical, very applied things. So for the duration of the week, the students took on the role of being um, the professional engineering consultants appointed by the school and were given the task of preparing a feasibility study for rooftop solar installation on the campus. So students, there were lots of courses from which you could have chosen during HKEP. Why did you pick the one on solar panels and what did you learn from it? And I'm curious, did it change in any way how you think about our school's environmental responsibilities? So I knew that solar was our future and renewable energy was our future. So that was really what drew me to this course. And I, I also wanted to help the school in our road to like sustainability I wanted to pursue um, engineering in the future. So that's why I chose this um, project. And I think Metanara really gave me a fundamental on like all the things we had to do because engineering is not just about designing. It's also about a lot about what Audrey mentioned. You know, we have to consider so many things when we're designing the solar panel. Just under to understand more about solar energy and other renewable energies and how the whole system works, but also how the whole industry works with understanding of what Audrey said on how to install it and what goes into that, but also understanding the jobs behind it, understanding work, how to, how to propose an installation of solar panels. So Mr. Zambafi, the facade renovation, which CIS is launching this summer, will include a significant investment in what are called building integrated photovoltaics. BIPV, which will allow our facilities to generate an enormous amount of solar energy. Can you please explain and tell us more about the benefits of this particular approach? We're looking at replacing the windows in our facade project with ones that can generate electricity while still acting as windows, and then um, hanging vertical opaque panels as parts of our facade so in lieu of uh, tiles or cladding, we are going to use um, solar panels. So goodness knows we have a lot of work left to do at CIS in the area of environmental protection and sustainable development. But if you had to pick one initiative that you believe CIS should prioritize next, what would it be and why? It's obviously a really important one that is currently in plan, as Mr. Sombathi said which is renewable energies in a way, and mostly solar panels, because that's sort of what we're planning, but any, any way possible that the school can figure out how to produce more energy for the Hong Kong power grid as the feed-in tariff system works. So with more shuttle buses, um, students can have the option of taking that. So it reduces the carbon emissions from having so many cars come up Braemar Hill. And it also helps fix the traffic problem. So, you know, killing two birds with one stone. So Metanoia actually suggested to us that we can, the next project we can do is mini windmills on the rooftop, which I think will be really cool. The audit established a benchmark for lots of different indicators of the school's environmental footprint. But going forward, I think it's important to track your continual improvement against that benchmark. 
I certainly hope that CIS will commit to carbon neutrality, um, whatever that deadline is that it sets. And what's important and exciting about it is that it will identify a number of different initiatives that lead toward that goal of neutrality. The community is large and we are all small parts of it. And no matter what effort you make yourself, um, however small it is, it, it also makes a difference. So each individual should choose their own priorities and, and take steps to, to make those um, you know, to make those priorities and action and, and to happen. And if we can cut back on um, the number of vehicles that are on the road, driving up the hill, driving down, big vehicles carrying one passenger, uh, we can make a huge impact on the planet. What tips for CIS students who are interested in getting involved in our sustainability efforts would you be able to share, particularly for those who are in our primary school? We usually have initiatives or events that students are free to join. So if you wanna get involved, you can join those. And also you can join a ditto strand, a service strand. So right now I'm in beach cleanup and it's super fun. There's also footprint and urban farming. When you have an opportunity to do something, the big thing is just to sign up for it. There's all these different school events, school projects. Or even if there's a selection of stuff and there's an opportunity for a sustainability based one or an environmental based one, I feel like a great thing to do is if you want to involve yourself more and if you want to become more aware about the world around us, just sign up. I feel like that's a great thing to do. Thank you very much to each of you for your remarkable contributions to helping CIS become a better citizen of the world. Your example, the concrete measures you're taking, everything that you've shared with us today lifts our hearts and gives us hope for the future. I wanted to express special gratitude to everyone in our CIS community who has made a contribution to this year's annual fund because it is the annual fund that makes possible our partnership with the Environmental Consultancy Metanoia. And it's the annual fund which makes possible our solar panels project this summer. Thank you to you all and may we continue on this path of empowering our students to serve the greater good and make a difference in the world.